Well, hello and welcome to what can only be described as the 146th episode of the Adoption of Foster and Podcast. The reason I say that is because Scott and I are in the same room. My name's Al Coates. My name is Scott Casson René. And uh, we're sat in your sofas and your living room. We are, we? for a change. A, a, a change. You, I'd, but I'm, I'm we're getting to say positive change. We're getting more regular at it because of the changes that have happened in the and world. And on that bombshell, Scott is more regular. <laughs> I've been more regular since March anyway. Oh, I've heard that. that. <laughs> uh, this is a bit of a non... It's not a non-episode. It's no. a st- we've had to... Stop putting yourself down. No, that's what you're I've here I've been for. doing that all day. <laughs> <laughs> we've spent the day... What, tell me what we've been doing. Oh, it's well, a, we've spent the last two days to get... Well, one and a half days. It's felt however, so yeah, much it's, longer. It has its felt like... Like a lifetime. Like a lifetime. Sentence. Um, so today was the official opening of the FASD Island offices. And... Um, yeah, it's been quite a couple of days, really, hasn't We've it? We've been hobnobbing it with the hoi polloi of, <laughs> of Western Ireland, haven't yeah. we? Literally. Well, I mean, literally. The thing is, I, I have to make the joke very quickly, because obviously, normally when you do speak to ministers, they leave a week later. Oh, I'm just hoping, death, I'm hoping this doesn't happen. But we had, um, we had, we did have a, a privilege. And I'm not, I've said this before, I'm not very political. As far as I'm concerned, a minister is a minister. It doesn't matter what. The yeah, affiliation yeah, yeah, is all that do. sort of stuff, yeah. Um, but today we, we um, welcomed the Minister for Disabilities, um, a lady called Anne Rabbit, um, who um, is not too far from us actually. She she lives up Galway way, um, but essentially she um, um, the local government representative. I hate to use the words, but I sometimes need to. So we call them TDs here. You call them MPs in the but UK, they're, but yeah, they're called they're TDs got a different here. System, haven't they? Um, and our local TD, who we are very much supported by, Carol Crow, his name is. Um, oh, he's a lovely man. He is. He's is such a gem. He really is. I mean, he yeah. can't, you know, he doesn't look great in force, but, you know, he's, he's such a gem. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. I mean, if you were an oil painting yourself, I'd take that, but frankly. True. Um, but anyway, he's been, a, he's been a massive supporter of us since um, yeah. we reached out to him however long ago it was um, and when we set up the offices he came in for a visit and he was really shocked I, th- I don't know whether I should take it as a compliment or an insult but he was really shocked at how well the offices were laid out yeah how professional they were how what our plans were wall to wall carpet well no okay. not quite I mean we've got carpet on the stairs hot and, but, hot and cold running yeah. water um, and uh, he organised it for us because he knew that you know he, he's he's taken the time to listen up to us about FASD what it is you know the kind of all the information that mm-hmm. we have on it, that we, you know, have learned, that we know, that we, the feedback that we get from parents and people and stuff, um, and he really gets it. He understands that he's a school teacher, as and he said this today in his speech. Actually, yeah. he said when he first spoke to Tris, he just clicked. It just clicked with him that this, you know, he has seen this mm. so often. But in his time as a teacher, he had only had one child with an FASD diagnosis. And because it was interesting, there, were, you, uh, there was lots of dignitaries there. There was the mayor, local mayor. Oh, yes. And everything, it, the landscape's very similar, but very different. It's, mm. it's quite, it's just, it's a, it's, I recommend coming to Ireland. It's lovely. It is. Yeah, I mean, I hope friendly, you have enjoyed warm, it. Yeah. Yeah. And amazingly diverse. Yes. Hugely. Uh, we're off point already, but yeah. they've got a, a Brazilian shop and you're in the, <laughs> like a shop for people from Brazil and it's in the West <laughs> not what Brazilian it, shop is well, it's a different not shop, a right? well, yeah, yeah not that kind of Brazilian <laughs> it's very hot here um, and it's rural west coast yeah. island and mm-hmm. you've got a community of people from Brazil brilliant I yeah. guess I mean I was saying to you Jacob's school like community you know there's Nigerians there's Algerians there's Americans you know there's just a whole it's, it's like a, it's just a kaleidoscope colour it really is and you yeah. know it's, it is amazing I'm still trying to get used to it because having lived here before it was very white or white Eastern European yeah and now there's so many different colours it is but amazing it's, it's so diverse for a rural really community because yeah. I'm I come from a rural community yeah, and course, it's just yeah. white yeah exactly white British English yeah so that was today so you know um, well as you know because you were here last night when I was decorating my cup well not decorating them but when I was baking my cupcakes Fashioning. for the for the opening and it was a winter to behold yeah it was just it was it was a fabulous day and there's, there's a lot of tension there's a lot of press there as well which was yeah. like <gasps> it, 
it, it's hard is because you're moving from one culture and so like from the UK culture coming here and then you sort of you just laying out some little stats around was it 4.8 percent they yeah, say estimate yeah. and Ireland's got the highest prevalence and just saying that actually this is this is something that's not it's a significant minority yeah. of it of, is of but adults I, and children. I think the interesting thing here is that there's no pathway to diagnosis, um, which is a big thing. Um, it, it exists here. I mean, if you know our um, local um, clinical psychologist from mm-hmm. CAMS was there today, who you know we see as a family, and she came to the opening. She knows all about FASD, and she can recognise it and she can see it, but she, there's no way for her to diagnose it because it's not, just not a recognised mm-hmm. condition here. And that was the whole point of getting the Minister for Disabilities to come along. Now, you know, she said in her speech, she spoke to Trace two years ago, um, she gets 45 minutes per appointment and she spent two hours on the on the Zoom call with yeah. her. And she just wanted more information, more information. And it's taken her this long to kind of work out a way to get this mainstream, you know. Mm. Um, and today was the first step in doing that really for her because we've taken the the the, the courage, I guess, to start something and see what happens you know and it, i think it's really helpful i mean from my point of view coming from a different like a well you have as well but coming from the uk where you see things it's easy to become sort of slightly cynical about mm, we don't do this and we don't do that and it's interesting to go somewhere else where those things are not present and there's other things that are maybe mm-hmm. better yes. there's other things that are just not existent and you go sometimes you it's helpful to not take things for granted because yeah. it is much more widely known about in the UK, much yeah. accepted. And, and I think there's an element of shame here, <clears throat> culturally a lot of yeah. shame, that we're a bit ahead in the UK. Yeah. And so just it's nice to kind of get that comparison. Exactly. And you have to remember here, I mean, adoption figures are very low here. So yeah. a lot of these children with FASD will still be living within the biological yeah. family. Um, and, and the shame thing is going to be a lot more prevalent here than it would be in the UK. Um, and that's not blaming anybody, but because the majority of children who get diagnosed with FASD in the UK are adopted or in the care system. Because it, they do, it doesn't, the people who are pushing the diagnosis are not getting exactly. the, stig- yeah. the stigma. And I yeah. had that with in foster care recently where someone was waiting to get a diagnosis, but there was no hint of, this doesn't wash up on me. No. Exactly. It, so there's, there's, no, there's nothing lost, yeah. is there? You know? So that's, that's a big difference here. And of course you have com- different communities here. You know, you have... Like we're saying, you've got very diverse ethnicities, um, but you've also got a travelling community as well. You know, we don't know huge. how that affects them. Yeah. We don't know how alcohol consumption affects them. We don't know how you know how that all works. Well, yeah, in their culture, not necessarily yeah. as individuals. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes, <laughs> that's what I meant. Yeah. So, um, so it's, it's it's a really interesting time and really interesting opportunity. And you know, in our time, you know, it's like anything. You're a caretaker, aren't you? You're a caretaker of whatever it is that you do until mm-hmm. the next person or till you yeah, retire yeah. or till you leave That's or whatever. That's a good segue. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, keep going. All oh, right. Um so you know, we're not going to fix it all in the time that we no. have FASD Ireland, but if we can get it to a point where people are more aware of it then that's what, we, you know, we know that it's really difficult to support families with FASD. We'd love to do that, and that is the plan, longer term. Um, but for now, it's about awareness and about yeah. kind of bringing those numbers down a bit more. So that's... No, of, it's, a, it's, a, it's a... it's a It was wonderful to be here. And it I was. Really, really I'm myself. really grateful that you were. You were painting in I your very, gimp uniform. I'm and very and, boy, <laughs> with <laughs> my little finger. With his broken finger, bless oh, you. Painting away yesterday. I'm having a terrible holiday. Um, I know you are. You're, not, you're just not doing well. You shouldn't just have holidays. It's that simple. I, honestly, I, I mean, I normally take an emotional uh, yeah. crash in a holiday because yeah. I, my whole sense of you self is wrapped up in what I do. When, yeah. I, when I'm not allowed to do it, I, I realise that how devoid and empty my life yeah. is. I think it's come back to bite you this holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. With a de- dead pet. Um, Bless her. Yeah. If, if, people, if people follow me on social media, my dog yeah. died it's in an accident. accident. And I have to apologise to Scott because I sent him a picture of the aftermath. Uh, the yeah. dog died in a very unpleasant way. Yeah, and um, you had to carry it home, carry her home. Yeah, yeah. So that was a really horrible experience, yeah. and we're all a bit, we're all really sad because I, I do fourteen thousand steps a day, on average this year, and that's because I just love walking my dog. Yeah. Um. So, so yeah, some of the other one. Yeah, good old yeah. Esther. Esther's yeah. an absolute star, but she's a bit glum. Well, she would be. That's her daughter that died. Yeah, she. I think she was secretly quite happy because she used to bite her face. <laughs> um, I mean, it has been notable that none of us have been bitten since she's died. 
Oh, Which, bless her. Oh, yeah. She's, that was just she, her thing, she, wasn't she, it? She was one... I kind of had a thought about it that you know, she's so bright that perhaps evolution was kind of saying, this dog is too bright, it needs mm. to die. Mm. Well, I mean, we had to change the ha- the, knob, um, the handles and all of the house to door knobs because she, she was just opening doors and going where she wanted. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. She was like an evil genius. Okay. Mm. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to comment on whether that was... Yeah. Th- and I ha- I was like going to work with bite marks on my head. Yeah. Like I where remember she- you said she'd sunk her teeth into your head. Yeah, into yeah. my head. And she- it's not an aggression. It was just like, oh, she just couldn't help herself. It was just... It's like, oh, yeah, anyway, we don't yummy, need to talk about my But um, I, I've been wanting <laughs> to talk to you because I, um, I feel like we've been a podcast coming up now for... This will be our seventh... End of our sixth year <gasps> in October. Days. Um, and I'm reflecting that we're not the we're not the bright young things we were. Are we? Were we? Well, I'm certainly not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah no, there, there's much water I was passing the bridge. And I've been really thinking about where, what is the future hold for us in relation to adoption? Because it feels like lots of things, lots of bits of the landscape have moved. And I feel like mm. adoption isn't, whereas when we started, adoption was the gold standard. As much yeah. as everyone went, adoption is not the gold standard. From a policy and a financial yeah. and a conversation point of view. Well, also, I mean, it was what I did when we started of this course, as well. Yes, you know, Because yes. I was I'm fully immersed in 150 hours a week at Adoption UK. At the DFE. And, and, the, D- and the DFE, and that's, that's how we met at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. I do have fond Small memories of those meetings. <laughs> um, oh, that was, I, I still chuckle now thinking of, of you kicking me. In, it was like naughty schoolboys kicking each other under the table because uh, you were... But we always used to go and have a cup of tea after. A cup of tea. A cup of tea. A cup of tea in the church chat. Yeah. Um, I just <clears> wonder whether we... We were chatting, weren't we, about... Mm. Um, the future. There's a few things, right? The, this, yeah. I haven't chatted to you about this because I wanted to have this conversation. Oh, about yes, it. you said about this because so I started I talking think, about do we? I'm wondering whether we should stop having adoptees on the podcast. Oh, why? I, I just wonder whether actually... For one, we... Recently, we, we had someone on Liz Harvey. It was fantastic. Mm, yeah. And I mis, misintroduced her. Not that she complained. No. Someone else complained about yeah. how I introduced yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a long... that, And so I corrected that. That was fine. But I thought, we're, are we putting people... Because of maybe the, the 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 environment around adoptees, are we putting people in the targets of other people? Mm. Okay, yeah. I really don't want to do that. I don't want to be part of that narrative where yeah. anyone who hasn't got... Like, there's an orthodoxy about this is what people must say about adoption as an adoptee. And we, anyone who, we get people, all kinds of people come and they can say whatever they want. If they say that, then are we putting them in the crosshairs? Mm. I don't want to be part of, you know, you know poor Liz Harvey got a right yeah, roasting she did, because she, she was yeah. on the podcast. And yeah. you think, well, I don't want to be part of that. And also I'm thinking, we've, uh, blowing our own trumpets, am I? We've worked <laughs> really hard to try and promote any everyone's voices. And yeah. yeah, of course, that's self-selecting to a point. And we say, we've say we said yes to everyone. Yeah. I don't think there's anyone... We, there's only one person I've ever denied, and that was oh, that was an argument over a PDF. Oh, I'm tempted to ask you who, but I know you want to answer that. No, I can't. It's recorded. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but you'll that have was to an tell argument. Me afterwards. That was an argument over a PDF, oh, and it was an adoptive parent. But anyway, it's, it's like really odd. <laughs> oh, I can't um, wait to hear who this is afterwards. It's anyway, it's Tish Dash Dosh. Um, and I just think, um, do we need to step back and go, right, well, take your own place and create mm. your own create your own world well, for that. that I mean I think it's an interesting point I mean I would I think there's a couple of things in there so number one is that we have never said oh we are the voice of adoptees nope. but what we ha- what we have tried to do is give a platform for them to share their stories in whatever way whether that's coming on as guests on, on our podcast or going on conversations yeah. and I guess that's when we started to have adoptees on wasn't it was in, through conversations and then as time went on we, you know they, <clears throat> like us intelligent people nothing wrong with them they have views they have opinions they do professional no jobs censorship. they do non-professional jobs all the sense so that's why we had it so I think in some ways you've got a point because um, you know our podcast was for adoptive parents that's what we started off to do yeah we didn't start out to help anybody else within the kind of it's our views yeah on exactly and it was it was i mean our first guest we were probably more nervous than our first guest was i would imagine because we'd never you were our first guest well yeah i mean yeah I, but i know what you was, mean that was a little bit different wasn't it that but, was very different oh we were so young yeah but i guess you're right because actually what 
happened with Liz is the prime example of, I don't want to call it a pylon, but effectively yeah. a pylon where Liz was trying to do something to help the, the whole adoption community. Absolutely. Not just by coming on, but by doing what she did with the... Um, the, 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 the select called, committee. Yeah, the select committee. And then putting Inquiry. herself out there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden... You know, it's like she's getting abused for it. And I don't think that's really fair. And, and with all respect, people from a different continent mm. having wading in about things that were really quite specific to the yeah, UK exactly. as well. So. And I guess the other thing for me really is about the... Uh, I mean, you know, as parents, and I'm not just talking about me and you, but I can talk for me, me and you because I know we have... We have learned so much from having adoptees on the podcast, whether yeah, that's been through conversations yeah. or, or because it's actually made me rethink some of the ways that Definitely. I have parented over the years. And you know, I'm still we're, we're both still doing it. We're, still, we're both still got relatively young yep. youngins in our house who we have to do you know lots the day of day by day stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so there's yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's a, fu- it's a it is a funny one because you know. Actually, by now, I would have hoped that, like you and I, somebody would have picked up a podcast for adoptees and gone, I'm going to do that for the for the UK yeah. specific. Yeah. Because there are ones in the US, isn't there? But yes. It's, don't get me wrong, a lot, of, a lot of it is the same, but some of it is different. Um, and I'm surprised that nobody has done yet because actually... You know, if if you're go- if you're sitting waiting on somebody to pay you for it, you'll be waiting a long time. Oh yeah, because that, that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Al is literally nearly bank- bankrupt from yeah, paying that, for this. Yeah, that and if, my f- if, if people are regular listeners, they know that the cake sponsorship <laughs> did not come through. <laughs> oh, clearly, <laughs> yeah, clearly, I have, I have eaten cake though. Um, yeah, oh, it's, so it's and, a labour of love. But that to me surprises it because you know, adoptees. And sorry if anybody's listening and don't like being called an adoptee, I'd but adopted adults, whatever you term yourself, you, you could you could do it as well. It doesn't, you know, it's... <laughs> I know what you're saying, if, if Al can do it. Well, if Al could do it, yeah. Could yeah anybody do could do it. But, but yeah. that's the point, isn't it? You know, we've been criticised over the, the years for, um, for being this, that and the next thing. We've, if, if we've ever said anything that's been picked up, it's not been pointed out to me specifically. No, no one's ever come at me. But all I've done is learn from the experiences of those that we've talked to. And that's, oh. that's not just contained to adoptees. That's contained to social workers, to adoptive parents, to birth parents. Yeah. To, you know, the, the whole range of people that we've yeah. had on. So I'm not, you know, not trying to say we're the best and what have you. No, but we just create a platform. That's yeah, all we've exactly. done. We, when yeah. we sort of commentate on the people who come through. That's, we're yeah. just commentators. We're not... Yeah, exactly. Nothing beyond that, really. And, and we've kept going despite the criticism. Yeah, yeah, because I'm thick-skinned and, yeah, and, and you I, run away. And you, you, hide, you hide me from it. You hide <laughs> um, it from me. Yeah, do I? Should, Bar should. one or two that slip through this slip through again. That, yeah. <laughs> and, and I just, well, I wondered that, and I, I mean, it feels like a bit of an overstatement to say that, but I just wondered, in the grand scheme of things, and I think it reflects maybe our family life as well, is that mm. adoption isn't the defining thing. But there's... no. I mean, for us as a family, it is, you know, it is. But it is defined. It is very fundamental. Yeah. But there's so much more going on that mm. is related to the what stuff that's relevant to the wider community. So we had this conversation today, didn't we, about do we want to broaden out the scope of the podcast to include fostering and permanency and kinship and focus on the issues that are universal for everyone and then bring specifics in? Mm. Because it is the Adoption Fostering Podcast, yeah. but it's the Adoption Podcast, isn't it? Well, it is. Really. It is. <laughs> and I mean, well, I think I think we've probably over the years both recognised that without actually saying it out loud until, th- well, not today, but, yeah, you know, recently. Um, and I think that, you know, we've, sp- we've spoken to a number of people who are involved in adoption. We've seen regionalisation come in. Come regionalisation was a big chunk of lots of things when we first started, because that's when it first started. Yeah. So it's really taken over in terms of adoption being like you said, the gold standard and all this sort of stuff. Um, and you and I have both lived through this kind of phase where things have changed um, in terms of SGOs and kinship. And, yeah. And rightly, that is, you know, that has increased and it, sh- and it should have done. Totally. But we, we aren't the professionals when it comes to talking about that in the same way we're not about 
ad- how it feels to be adopted or how, how it is to be adopted. Yeah. Um, so I guess in the same way, you know, you're talking about having ado- not having adoptees on anymore. I think that we rather than not having adoptees on, that we broaden it out, but we have people who know their onions. Like when we have Emma on to talk about fostering. Yeah. You and I have both been foster carers. Not as long as she you has. Know. She knows what fostering she, oh, is. She's lived it. We've lived it, but, but not quite to the same level or extent as she yeah. has. So when we have her on, it's always an interesting chat because mm-hmm. she, she brings with her just a breadth of information. That lived life. Yeah. And we, you know, and different people have come on and talked about it. So maybe it is just that we broaden it out and we, and you know, just even Twitter today, are people saying, you know, we just look at issues that are related to the the diversity of the community and the challenges yeah. of raising children who've mm-hmm. experienced trauma and um, and that may, maybe broadens it out. I don't know. I, I'm just I'm really I don't. I just feel a little bit frustrated. I, I'm not. I don't feel particularly miffed, and I don't take it personally when when you know we get a bit of um, what pushback. I don't. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah, it's fine. You push know, back, you, pushback is good. Yeah, it's just the way it's. Perhaps. Articulated. Yes. Which I've always said, because I've always said, if, you know, and I say this to my kids as well, debate, debate with me, <laughs> debate with me. Let's have a But if you're going to be rude to me, because at the end of the day, I am a human being as well. Yeah. As you are. Yeah. Then it stops. Th- there's a line. Yeah, there is yeah, a line. You, yeah, the minute you start because calling me Because I'm names. respecting you as a human being, so therefore respect me back. Yeah. And I will listen to your views and opinions. Yeah, so we did talk, I mean, we jokingly talked about rebranding the podcast, didn't yeah. we? About what, maybe kind of keeping yeah, lots not, of... Not the, just changing the, image, uh, the logo or anything. A like, blue logo. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've got to be red. You know how I feel about red. <laughs> yes, you like so, a bit of red. I do like a bit of red. Um, but I, I, I'm really, that excites me about the future. And I think that somewhere we've, and actually the future for children who need long-term families is much more diverse than it was. And maybe that's the key yeah. issue, isn't it? That, that yeah. To, Six years ago, it was adoption or fostering. Yeah, and now it feels like there's so many more options, and we, and we've got we we can use the platform to draw in all that expertise mm, and maybe exactly. create. A, I mean, when a you think about tool. you know the the support, and yes, I know there's people who are listening and going, "What support?" But there is support for adoptive parents. Oh yeah, yeah. There is training for adoptive parents. There is assessments for adoptive parents. You know, I'd love to get to the bottom of you know what it looks like for a kinship carer as an example. Yeah. What, is, what does their assessment look like? I know what it looked like 10, 12 years ago when I used to sit on a permanence panel and we used to get kinship mm-hmm. carers. At the, this was at the time where they were trying to increase the number of children within yeah. the family, to st- yeah, remain yeah. in the family. But it's very different to how it looks now. And I'd love to get to the bottom of that. But I'd also like to get to the bottom of the realities of some of the support that they're getting or not getting, Yeah, whether that's financial Definitely. or... You know. Yeah, and by the time this goes out, there'll be there'll be a podcast um, where someone talking about uh, contact in kinship arrangements and yeah. doing a PhD. So I think I feel like there's lots of stuff that we could explore, and I think adoption will always be massively central to our yes. lives. And I think that we've lobbied hard and changed the conversation. Uh, we talked about this about that yeah, out. we did, and that's not. I don't think that's us blowing our own trumpets. I think that that is true. I think that we have come along as independent human beings who have experienced as adoptive parents and changed certain elements of you know how it's perceived mm-hmm. and I think we've also brought on guests who've done it who'd, who've helped us to do that it's yeah. not just you and I you know I think of Mark Ors yeah just as an example because he's quite recent so we've had Mark on twice three times and every time he comes on I always feel that he's learned as he's gone on as well, because he's an adoptive parent, but he also does a job with an yeah. adoption. And I feel that that helps us. We help him because he does listen to us. If we have a conversation with him, yeah, yeah. He, he listens. He, we have influenced the influencers, yeah. haven't we? And I think Like that's... Will Quince. Oh, he went and time, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> but I felt that... No, I still am. I still wake up in the night. You're still miffed by that. I you? am. Well, I just felt yeah. we, we genuinely moved the dial with Will. Yeah. And then he went and jogged off. Well, it could have been worse. I mean, he... Could have been Underwood. By the time this comes out, he could be Prime Minister. I mean, honestly, it's, this is, we're recording this on what, the 31st of August. By the 5th... There's only six days to go until you get Yeah, we'll, get, we'll find out who's... Ooh. And he might get... He might be the Chancellor, you never know. You never know who... Literally, be, yeah. don't know. Or he might be 
sweeping the yeah, corridors. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you could be working in the tea room. I feel quite positive about the future, though. Well, I do as well. I mean, I don't think that there's any. I, I, like you said to me yesterday, <clears throat> you never listen to a podcast and go, oh, that was a pile of rubbish. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> you don't think, I'm done with this now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, blogging lasted less time than podcasting. Well, no, no, it didn't. Oh, did I it blogged right through till the end of 2018, and I put a, I put a blog out. And see, I'd always started with blog. I started blogging at 20, September 23 at 13, and I, and I did every other week, and then I thought I need to do it weekly, and I did it week, which is exactly the same pattern as I did with the podcast. Mm. And um, and the, my superpower was the the, the kind of reliability. It came out on Friday yeah. morning, mm-hmm. so people would get part of it and then I thought well how do you end that mm. how do you not kind of just have a blog that trails off you have to end it yeah um, and so I kind of put a post said I'm stopping I yeah. will post but, but don't expect it every week yeah, yeah. Um, and that overlapped and I think that's because I really enjoyed the podcasting format and I really enjoy talking yeah and talking to people I think that's that interaction and yeah. I think we were talking about this today as well I think that if I hadn't done it with you because we are like drunk and cheese yeah in we lots of, we, we, totally in Tots. so many ways. Torts, man. Torts. Um, but we, we've got a shared experience. And I think that if... It, we were saying today, it just cheers me up. Yeah. I, I mean, like, know. before, and I'm like, oh, no, I've got to do a podcast. Um, and then halfway through, <laughs> I'm, like, having a laugh, like I'm texting you, calling you an idiot. Um, <laughs> halfway through an interview, because you've forgot something, or yeah, you're calling true. me a... You're yeah. sending me a gif of a baby throwing up or yeah, something. Yeah, um, whatever. Yeah. And it ju- it's a really enjoyable hobby. Mm. So if no, you know, if no one listened... That, yeah, I don't. I want people to listen, but yeah. if no one listened, it I mean, stop me. I I <laughs> know because I don't. <clears throat> I wouldn't even know where to start looking. But I know that you do look at some of the figures of our podcast and other yeah. podcasts, and you know we we know we've got a good listenership. We we're a big fish in a little pond, I think. Yeah, in is the that, UK, is that the right word? Yeah, we are a big fish in a little yeah, pond. Okay. Yeah, you know, some of the American ones are huge. Yeah. I mean, they're literally living off the benefits of that. Well, exactly. In, 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 on their Leah jets. I'm talking about within, <laughs> our, within our community. We can't even get sticky buns. Yeah, can't. No, I can't even get a cake promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Today's podcast was brought to you by Greg's. <sighs> Could you imagine? <sighs> but you would just promote Greg's for free, you see. Uh, you know Why me, I'm, you I'm, I'm passionate about Greg's. Well, I know, because you've got one at the end of your road, so you're just I looking have. for a free bun. Oh, do you? you know what I did with the dog on the last day? I went and we, and we shared a bacon sandwich, me and the two dogs. So I'm not sure I can go back to Greg's now without oh, having no. a measure of sadness. <laughs> There's oh, triggers and trauma everywhere. I'm genuinely it? traumatised by yeah. what happened to the dog. I and I, it, I can cope with the fact she's dead. It's just the fact that I had to carry her back yeah. to the house. Did you actually see it go? No, I didn't see no, it. No, okay. That's fine. We don't need to go into it. I just... There's part of me that but just Shania wanted to... But Shania was with me. Uh, she was... Oh. So, shall I tell her the story? I'll, right, so I... I lost the dog. The dog ran off and she does that, but she didn't come back and I couldn't find it. So I was, for about 20 minutes, I'm looking. So I rang Shania and I said, look, she now is at home. I said, well, just ride your bike up the lane and see if you see it so she doesn't get on the farm and yeah. cause chaos. <clears throat> um, and then I saw the dog dead. I went, oh, damn. And she's not, but she's dead. So I'll go and retrieve her. But I thought, oh, I've got another dog with me. I can't go to where she needs to be yeah. to retrieve her. I'm dancing around some of this because it's gruesome. Yeah. And um, so I then so Shania came and she held the dog and I went and got the dog, pulled her back, and then uh, and she was she was fairly in one piece and we said goodbye and the, the dog sniffed around and we kind of yeah. had our moment, a delicate moment, and then I had to carry her like half a half a mile God. over my shoulder. It's not good. It's not good. It was not pretty. Anyway, it was it was pretty grim. And yeah. in the midst of all that, I was really affected by... I'd been doing some training about childhood adversity. And you're going, this is a real moment for my daughter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what have I done? I've traumatised Traumatised. child. Yeah. Like, literally, you know, come, come, be adopted. Everything will be fine. Oh, no, you've you've been adopted by a maniac. Yeah. Um, and in the midst of all that, I thought, actually, well, no, that this is part of life. And actually, this we really talked about it and really connected and I, but I was really conscious of you know there's been other losses in yeah. little mm-hmm. ones lives um, and we just sort of really we just checked in and we were really delicate with each other um, and within 30 seconds she was 
just now I was making a joke about something and everything in me wanted to go, what the bloody hell, it's an inappropriate joke. And then I was kind of putting my theoretical head in, because I was quite traumatised. Yeah. Um, this theoretical head about the, the how children process, how we all process yeah. grief, which is like you you pro- you you process your grief and then you flit out and get on with life and then you yeah. process your grief. It's, like the, it's called the dual process model of grief. Yeah. You've probably heard of the grief cycle, but yeah. it's this mm-hmm. idea that children flit in, flit out. And she was like that all day. She was like having a great time, laughing and yeah. joking. And then she was like sad. And yeah. we've been like that, and we're all a bit at a loss. Anyway, so I don't know how I got onto that. It was the long grass, but it was um, Greg's. That's where it starts. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. But I, if you get the Greg's app, I tell everyone, because on your birthday, they send you a, a free cake. <laughs> they don't send you it. You get you have to go and get it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, so, the Greg's man turning up your door. Yeah, you yeah, hiya, Greg Greg's. Listen, I got writing on a coffee cup today. You did, yeah. I, I did. went, yeah. 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 So, yeah. They, so, there's nothing else really on my agenda. I mean, I, we can talk forever. You what? have an agenda? I, I have had an agenda from day one, mate. Um, well, I think to say that, you know, today was really useful um, for No Borders as well. <clears throat> um, in terms of, you know, some of the opportunities that may come up in Ireland. Yeah. We met Maggie May today. Yeah, we're going to have we? a podcast with Maggie May. Yeah, we're going to record a yeah, podcast with Maggie May. So Maggie May is um, a young lady who woman what's the difference lady sounds nicer than woman no go on social work hat right so uh, lady is a is a value statement it's a it's a it's a judgment about her class really oh my god you social workers need to get a life to 2022 no no, it's true but it's um, Uh, so why I come from like an environment where a church and it would be like oh the ladies are going to make cakes now and the men mm. are going to talk about stuff you go well so why are they men why are they not gentlemen and the ladies why is it the ladies because you're a lady so um, uh, yeah it, it, words matter words matter she's a woman well we know that right okay so anyway Maggie May who's oh, young oh see you've got me do you know what I had a who's pint young? of Guinness I've had a pint yes oh yes it's maybe 20 years since I've had a pint of Guinness and I can't feel my legs <laughs> It's actually three years since she had a pint of Guinness. She had one in 2019. Did I? On the way out. Obviously, it was so traumatic. threw you out. <laughs> I wiped it from my memory because I was so very drunk. Yes, well, um, yes, we were taken out to dinner tonight, weren't we? It was very nice. Oh, by someone else who we want to get I on the know. podcast. I yes. Can we say who he is and we'll, yeah, you we'll can lobby? Say yeah. So, Paul, what's his surname? I don't know. You can even remember the minister's name earlier, sir. So. I don't know. Paul White. Paul White, and he's the CEO, CEO of, of Hidden, Hidden Disabilities. Disability Sunflower Scheme. Are you repeating everything I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just I'm that drunk. It feels like You've you had are. one pie, man. And that was four hours ago. Yeah, um, exactly. But I thought he'd be a fantastic guest and very mm. similar to uh, Mad, Mad Look Dave. Yes, yeah. A similar that. kind of style. Uh, uh, but genuinely affecting a really practical, tangible way yeah. of affecting the quality of people's lives is yeah. really good. And, well, he was there today because obviously part of our partners, well, part of our funding comes from some of the work that we do yeah. with them. And, um, and he came and he, he kind of, I, I guess that was the, the major launch of Hidden Disabilities in Ireland, actually. Hidden Disabilities Sunflower Scheme in Ireland because it's, yeah, you know, it was, we worked in tandem. The press were there, you know, there's photographs taken, there's a whole thing, bang and of stuff. It was noted that that, that lit connection's been made with, with yeah. the Ryanair, which is, by the time this comes out, that'll be announced. Hopefully, because right? <laughs> right. you've just said that. Well, the minister said it today, didn't she? I know. Yeah. So that's yeah. out. So the Paul um, But that, but you think, for a lot of people, that's a big deal, a huge isn't thing. it? Yeah. You know, and it's huge. And I mean, to say I'm quite proud of my husband, would be an understatement. I mean, who the heck gets Ryanair? To well, the min- that's what the, the minister said. That, you know, he's a, so he's a slippery thing. fish. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, and they have literally, you know, they have taken it on. They've train, training all their staff, their head office staff, their cabin crew, their you know ground staff, the whole jing bang. So, but that's huge. But and and yeah, you can look at like aviation and go, well, you know, well, do, do kids need to go on train airplanes? Well, not necessarily. But then the whole hidden disabilities thing is then like washes into buses. And yep. everyone needs to get a bus. So exactly. Both kids going to school or yep. families going wherever they need to go. So I think that would that would be really good to get him in. And I think yeah. that sort of reflects the new where we want to go with stuff that's a bit yes. yeah. it's broader out there, but and it's, generic. Yeah, but it's actually a, a, it's applicable to our families, isn't yeah. it? You know, I mean, I can, <clears throat> you know, yourself. I I have a sunflower now, a sunflower lanyard. Do you? Yeah, because you're Scottish. No. <laughs> 
No, because I have a hidden disability. Because you're Scottish. <laughs> no. When you wear your kilt, you don't have to wear your... Yeah, that is a disability. <laughs> we got the plate and Tim's. We did it gone, there's a man with a kilt on. So there's a man on, with a big disability. He's been on or a very small one. <laughs> it's like when he went to Mexico, he came back yeah. with a sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel like we need yeah. to finish now. Um, but yeah, um, and, and being aware of now, and you know, we just come back from holiday. I wore it in airports. Um, it was recognised in a number of the places, and you don't get any priority treatment or any special treatment. It's just that people are more aware of the They're fact just that you might just need down. some, yeah, give a bit of peace, a bit, a bit special. Yeah, I was trying to lobby you for one for being colourblind, but apparently, yeah, no, he, apparently that's he, he was not, not having that, was no, he? No, he wasn't, was he? Well, I'm gonna, when you get on the podcast, I'll call him. So yeah, can get, do, yeah. So, come on. Why is it not <laughs> a disability? I think before we invite him, I'm going to have to talk to him about his language because we would, would need to put an E. He would make a pirate blush, would, that man. Yeah. Um, He's proper A6, isn't he? Oh, he, did, he did a recording for you, didn't he? Because you were doing little videos. Yeah. Uh, and I was there when he did it. My name is Mark O'Kay. Because that's what he sounded like. That's funny. That's not his name, it's, but, you know. It's not his name. Um, is there anything else then for the list? I don't we... know. Let me check my list. No. No, no, nothing on my list as well. I think that we, I guess we feel it as a, a sense of genuine um, shifting. Uh, mm. And I think that reflects the wider context, the stuff off the back of the care review. Mm. Mm. And the, uh, the thing, Adoption it? Special Guardian Leadership Board, yeah. day away where it was very much 50%, 50% SGO, yeah. 50% adoption. And yeah, and um, and uh, it's all gone very quiet yeah. over and, there. And it's interesting as well because, you know, the more I look back on my time with like Adoption UK, being at the SGOB, you know, all those sorts of things, I think that there will always be people who require support because of adoption there will yeah. always be a need for parents who are not biological as in you know adoptive parents yeah. but I just think that as time goes on it's going to get less and less and less and, and that would be our hope yeah and to be fair that is that is the way I feel about it you know I never used to feel about it, like that about it and I'm not being negative about adoption I would do it all again of course I would but I would just like to hope that we've gotten to a point now where people are going, right, let's, let's take a step back here. Let's look at this properly and make a decision for these children that's going to suit them into yeah. their adulthood and not, not the other way around. Yeah, not getting stuck into those yeah. tram lines, those sort of historic tram lines of, well, if they if it's a bit messy going back, then it's, not, it's adoption. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, Or can we... And I think that's where, if you get kinship support, can you then support a grandma or a, exactly. an auntie or a yeah. Yeah. sibling or something? Yeah. And that, for me, feels right. And I feel that's something I can put my shoulder behind because I think that's probably part of the the messy conflict. And I think that on online with a lot of um, voices that are very clearly anti-adoption. Yeah. And I get that. Yeah. Totally, totally. get that. Yeah. But that, and it was interesting, there's a... If you've seen a few tweets recently and sort of joined in a bit um, about where people saying yeah, yes, but there is always going to be a case, but that feels like it's not. This isn't the place to be having that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. But not it makes online, me th- not in 140 characters or 280 characters. No, no, around. you're not going to win. Anything. But mm. it makes me think about the future of the adoption um, <clears throat> sector in relation mm. to the amount of staff. Yeah. Even th- I mean, if you think back five years, there was 170 odd agencies. Yeah. We're down to 32, 34, exactly. something. Yeah. And even that feels like a lot. Yeah. A lot of staff. And, and and the staff are very much focusing on adoption as well. That's their job, isn't it? Yeah. You know, adoption used to be like, again, the gold standard of social work, yeah. didn't it? If you yeah, were yeah. working in adoption, you know, that was probably where you were going to retire. Yeah, from you'd what reached I, it. Yeah. Um, and now, it's, that's not quite how it's going to... Yeah. And again, you, you, there's a whole, it's, it's a really shifting, I'd love to be able to kind of wind the clock forward 15, 20 years and think, all right, will we be a peculiarity as adoptive parents? Yeah. And you're seeing it, people sort of coming into adoption from infertility and you yeah. know, same sex families and single people. And you're going, you're not, you're not joining in the world that we joined in no. 10, 15, 20 years ago. And I think that's the case anyway, isn't it? You know, yeah. I look at, you know, some of the well for me same sex families you know and there's it's just so different 
Yeah. It's so, so very different for them. They, again, might not feel like it, but they have it so much better. Oh, that sounds like it sound like a uh, uh, But it's true. You but don't it, know you're yeah, born. No, you don't know you're born, you know. Anyway, but that's that's just how it is, I'm yeah. afraid. You know, because cool. things have improved. Excellent cool. stuff. So um, I am flying back to Angleterre tomorrow, which yeah. I'm very excited about. That's tomorrow, isn't it? So that's 12, is it 12 hours time? But yes. you don't mind being dropped off the airport. 20 minutes <laughs> no that's f- absolutely fine as long as there's a got wifi I'm, I'm totally fine I'll get out to be fair I, that would like if that was to happen you'd be you would actually be fine with that wouldn't you yeah I would cause so much mischief on the internet yeah, I would start would. bun fights yeah. I, I'm really excited because I'm getting I've got the, the finger doctor tomorrow and I'm going to tell him to break the bugger and put it pointing in the right direction it's yeah. like a, a melon farmer it just, it just feels like a Rubbish year for us both, really, doesn't it? I'm, in some I'm ways. fine. You're, you've had it much. I'm fine. Right, yeah. I'm totally fine. I've got to go in for my, um, my... Yeah, and I've got a few more days. Um, my procedure. Oh, yeah. But, so did, did this the last... This will be the this last one that comes out one, before yeah. the, you yes. get burly men running you through with 30 <laughs> yards of drainage rods. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody is uh, seriously listening and um, feel any empathy for me at all, on the 15th of September, I shall be in hospital for a procedure to check that everything that they did on the 13th of March it's has still, worked. Or is, it's yeah, clearly worked. Yeah. You're fine. But it's not just a case of going, you know, and I'm going, well, let's have a look. Can you touch your nose? You're tickety-boo. <laughs> it's a little bit more kind of extreme. But, I, I mean, but, it's, it's easy to miss that. But, but there's people going to fiddle on with your head. Yeah, I mean, that's is. quite yeah, a worry, know, isn't it? Yeah. I know you are quite worried. Yeah, I am uh, genuinely quite worried. No, yeah, nobody seems helping. to get it. You're the first person that's actually had any empathy for it at all. I say it to Tris. Like, and, if, and that's the most empathy you've I know, had? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> exactly. really concerning, isn't it? I say it to Tris, and I'm like, do you think they'll give me any, what was it called? A, Sedatives. Yeah, and he's like, no, no, they'll just go in. They'll whack it in. I'm like, oh, cheers, mate. Thanks for that. I would have thought they'll give you something. Uh, if not, I'm just going to Google it, because yeah. Google knows everything. I did... <laughs> I tried Google. It doesn't... It's, it says nothing for this Think, particular yeah, Who procedure. does... I mean, imagine working at Google, right? And, and having to put this right And being on the occupational health person yeah, no, no, no. for the Google staff. That would be like... You know, that would... <laughs> can you imagine the mind meld that would be? Because you'd like... You'd... <laughs> you just <laughs> yeah more leg hurts right let's have a look oh oh I don't know yeah. but also justifying their position by going, making oh, stuff up I'll come back to you Google <laughs> yeah answer because yeah. that's what all Google says well exactly yeah my, or, one of my children is um, literally Googles themselves in, to a point of near cardiac arrest so does my husband does he yes oh I can't get that I yeah. just don't get it he, um, he, he diagnosed himself with gout so me and the boys call it Google Go. <laughs> I'm the exact opposite because when I broke my and I did break my finger, but I, I fell over just the first day of my holiday. I fell over into a rock pool with um, Shania. So Shania's had a tr- like she tried. I know, like you've really done it to her this She's year, like, haven't you? Please, Daddy, don't take any more time yeah. off work. <laughs> um, and it was pointing in the wrong direction. It was clearly not right, and so I kind of went, "Oh, it's, it's we and I said, "Shall we just go?" I was like trying to be brave because I didn't yeah. want to freak her out. I was like, "Shall we just?" Why don't we just go back to the car? Um, and the dogs, so the dogs pounced on me. This was when he had two dogs. Yeah. So I'm laid in a rock pool, like rolling around they on the floor. With them, and then yeah. they jump on me and I get out. I go, listen. And we walked back and halfway along the walk, I thought, yeah, I'm feeling queasy and a bit lightheaded. I said, would you sit down and have a little bit think what we're going to do? And she was, going, she was like 10 year old. And I'm going, shut up. <laughs> Short breaths. <Yeah. laughs> and got back home and I went to see my neighbour, um, Eddie, and I said, uh, Eddie, look at this. Um, <laughs> Because oh finger hanging off. Yeah, Paul and, and I said, "Look at this. What do you think about this?" And I was like doing things with it, and because I'd, I'd nipped the bone there, and I nipped the bone there, and then I nipped that bone and heard it crunch, and thought, "Oh, that's Ooh, not that's not that, good. That's not what it's meant to do." No. Um, and Eddie looked at it and he went, "You should go to hospital." And I went, "Can I not just strap it up to the other finger?" Because honestly, I'll be in hospital for hours. And he went, "Nah, you need to go to hospital." And so that was yeah. how I ended up in hospital. Anyway, it sounds similar to me with my aneurysms. Yes. Oh, I'll just take two paracetamol, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah it's typical northern men, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, the Scottish well, northern. Yeah, yeah, northern yeah Scottish a bit hard. Yeah, do you know that I think it's a third of men die of um, illnesses that could be cured? Doesn't surprise me in the it slightest. doesn't surprise me. No, yeah, no. There you go. And on that bombshell. It's time to say goodbye. Well, Scott, it's been lovely to be in Ireland. Um, yes, thank you for coming. Uh, you will have to get you over to Angleterre sometime, won't we? Yes, we will. And, uh, Very soon. And get you into my... Uh, Hopefully once all this is 
now we're getting to the six month yeah. mark and we can they'll give you a clean bill of yeah, health exactly. and they'll fire you from a cannon yes. over to Blighty and I can drive again yay hey, wheels doing donuts around Asda exactly, Car Park on yeah, a Saturday yeah, night back Saturday to your night. favourite and pastime and McDonald's on my back on, yeah yeah the with your boom seat. boom yeah. music <laughs> within large yeah with the, the, the massive in Ennis yeah smashing oh well, well look after yourself uh, you. and uh, be good Bon Jovi Bon Jovi Bon Jovi